If you've ever missed a connecting flight or had a soul-destroyingly long layover, you will know the importance of the layover travel tips that I am sharing today. These are the top 15 layover do's and don'ts. I'll start off with essential layover tips to know before you book your flight. Then we'll move on to some cool opportunities for what to do on a layover, making the most of your layover from a comfort perspective. And I will finish off with a couple of critical things to avoid doing at your layover airport that could be very expensive in more ways than one. Let's do this. Let's start off with the most essential flight booking tips when it comes to layovers. Don't book a layover of less than 90 minutes. I mean, you could, and I have, but the shorter the layover, the greater the chance is that you're gonna miss your second flight if the first flight is delayed. And I don't know about you, but the stress of wondering if I'm gonna make my connecting flight basically ruins the first flight for me. I would much rather kill time at the airport between flights than cut it too close. And in a minute, I will give you some cool ideas for maximizing layovers. But there's another part to this equation that could make or break your trip. If you book a connecting flight on the same ticket, then if you miss the second flight because the first one is delayed or canceled, it's on the airline to rebook your flight at no cost to you. However, if you booked two separate tickets, and you miss your connecting flight, you're out of luck. In this case, I would incorporate a layover of even longer than 90 minutes. Pro tip, some flight search engines will give you stats about an airline or route. If you see that that flight is routinely delayed, it's all the more reason to build an even longer layover into your itinerary. In addition to booking a minimum layover, here are three important things to do. Have a plan if the first flight is delayed or canceled. In the same way that you don't wanna be stressed about whether or not you make your connection, you also don't wanna be stressed about whether or not you're actually going to be able to do whatever it is that you booked at your destination, which in some cases may be your entire reason for being there. For example, if you've booked a big tour at your destination, the stakes are pretty high if you don't have much time between when you arrive and when you start that tour or catch the train or do whatever it is that you've booked. This leads me to the next tip, which is to check the schedule for subsequent flights. My friend recently came to visit me on the Portuguese island of Madeira. This required a connecting flight in Lisbon. She was initially looking at a flight itinerary that A, had a connection time of less than 90 minutes, and B, had her arriving to Madeira on the last flight of the day. With that itinerary, if the first flight was delayed, there was a good chance that she would miss her connecting flight. And with no more flights going out that day, then even a short delay on the first flight would have meant that she would have to spend her the first night of her vacation in the Lisbon airport waiting for the next available flight in the morning. Not a good plan. So instead, she chose an earlier overseas flight to Lisbon and then a slightly longer layover and also a greater selection of flights from Lisbon to Madeira if she missed the first connection. My last booking tip is to double check your connection airports. There are two things to look for a change of terminal or a change of airport. Most search engines will alert you to both so you know before you book. A change of terminal is usually pretty easy, but it can be time consuming depending on the airport. Sometimes you can walk between terminals. Sometimes there's a train or a bus, but recently I had a couple of experiences where the airport terminals were actually completely separate buildings, nowhere near each other, like more than 20 kilometers apart. So while there was a shuttle bus to help tra with travel between the terminals, it still took a really long time. This is not something that you want to discover while you're in the middle of a short layover with a tight connection. The same goes for airport transfers. Sometimes you can book a connecting flight that's on the same ticket, but still requires you to change airports in between. Depending on the city, these airports may or may not be easy or quick or cheap to move between. So before you book that ticket, it's important to research exactly how you can get from one airport to the other one and how long it will take so you can decide whether or not it's something you wanna do or if it's even realistic given the itinerary. Next up, I wanna share my top layover do and don't when it comes to comfort. Do, research what amenities are available at the airport where your layover is. If you have a few hours to kill, it's great to know what you can do in that time. Airport amenities to keep an eye out for include lounges that you can access by paying a nominal fee. This will give you a place to hang out in comfort with decent Wi-Fi, food, and sometimes even a shower to freshen up. Although there is a cost to access these lounges, 
consider how much money you might otherwise spend on food and drinks at airport restaurants during your layover. You might actually spend less money on a lounge pass, and you'll have all the food and drinks you want, plus a place to hang out for a few hours. I will note that not all lounges are created equal, so it pays to read up on user reviews before you shell out for lounge access. Other amenities to look into include quiet rooms and airport hotels or layover hotels that you can rent by the hour. A few years ago, I had a five hour layover at a really awkward time of night when airport lounges weren't open. But with a bit of research, I found a layover stay service that had a special dark room with reclining lounge chairs designed to allow passengers to catch a nap in comfort in between flights. They also had showers and snacks and they charged by the hour. It was totally worth it. One of the resources that I use to discover the best places to rest in between flights is a website called Sleeping in Airports. While it was originally designed as a crowdsourced site to help people find the best spots to sleep, like on the floor in airports, it now shows a much wider range of options if sleeping on the floor isn't your style. This is the site that I used to find that layover stay business that I just mentioned. So do research amenities for a comfortable layover and don't put all of your essentials into your checked luggage. This is standard advice anyway, since you want to have a change of clothes at the very least, just in case your checked luggage is lost or delayed. But when it comes to layovers, in some cases, you won't have access to your checked luggage during the layover. So if you do want to have that shower or change your clothes, you'll need to have that in your personal item bag or your carry-on luggage. And if you have a long layover or even an overnight layover, it's doubly important to make sure that you have all the things you need, including supplements or prescriptions as well. Now, depending on the location of your layover and how long your layover is, you may actually be able to leave the airport and discover a new place. And in some cases, the airport makes it especially easy for you to do so. Along these lines, some do's and don'ts. Do check for activities and layover tours. For example, if you are flying with Turkish Airlines and you have a layover in Istanbul between 6 and 24 hours, you'll have access to a selection of tours that they provide for free. This is a great opportunity to check out a city that you might not otherwise have had a chance to visit, and they'll even pick you up from and drop you off at the airport. While Turkish Airlines might seem a bit obscure, there are actually quite a few opportunities to fly with them and to connect through Istanbul when you're flying between North America and Europe or between Europe and Asia. So knowing that this is possible, I'd actually be inclined to build in an extra long layover to make the most of this free tour experience. I found out about this because I was considering a possible flight itinerary myself that connected through Istanbul. And when I did a search for things to do during a layover in Istanbul, this came up. But even if there's not a full tour service available, you may still have long a long enough layover that you can leave the airport and head into the city for a wee adventure. That's what I did once when I had an eight hour layover in Frankfurt. There was a service available to store my luggage in the airport and I hopped on an airport train into the city to explore for a few hours. It was time well spent and it was nice to stretch my legs and do a little exploring. But there is a part two to this and it is do check for visa requirements in your layover country. If you're doing the free layover tour in Istanbul, chances are you're gonna to need to apply for an e-visa for Turkey. So before you book a flight with a long layover with the intention of getting out to explore during your layover, make sure you know the visa requirements and apply in advance if necessary. While you're researching visa requirements, research local cultural norms for your layover country. If for example, your layover is in a country where women are required to cover their head and shoulders, make sure that you have appropriate clothing with you in your personal item bag. Same thing goes for places where you might visit religious or cultural sites that require both men and women to wear long pants. Also important before you book a flight with this layover experience is don't forget about time zone changes. Your flight itinerary will show the local time at your destination. So if your itinerary shows that you arrive at 2 p.m. and your connecting flight leaves at 8 p.m., that's the local time. But before you schedule too much for that layover, Consider what time your body might think it is, as in what time it is at the place that you just left. If 2 p.m. at your destination is the equivalent of 4 a.m. at the place that you just left and you just got off an eight hour flight, you might be a little dazed and confused. And it's important to recognize this as a possibility in advance, especially if you're left to your own devices to design and execute your layover experience. The last thing you need is to make a mistake because you're underslept and jet lagged and to miss your connecting flight. Make sure you check out my episode about long haul flight survival tips so you can make the most of that long flight and disembark as refreshed as possible. Also, 
Don't forget about the weather at your layover location. If you plan to leave the airport, it's important to make sure you have the right stuff with you, whether it's warm clothes or sandals or perhaps a rain jacket. For my eight hour layover in Frankfurt, it was December and I was flying somewhere warm. So I was kind of underdressed for my Frankfurt experience and I didn't have as good a time as I might have had if I had properly prepared for what the weather would be in Frankfurt. In my defense, I didn't actually think I was gonna leave the airport during my layover because, well, I hadn't really researched what I could do during my layover which was also my fault. So I guess that's a pretty bad defense. All right, we're rounding the corner with some super important do's and don'ts regarding airport protocol. Don't assume that you don't need to clear security at your layover airport. Some airports are designed in such a way that when an international flight arrives, even if you're only connecting through that city, you still need to clear customs and collect your luggage before you can proceed to your connecting flight. When this happens, you're likely going to have to clear security again. This is because the luggage carousels are in a part of the airport reserved for everybody who has effectively arrived. And when you get your luggage, you can just leave the airport. This came up because a viewer of this channel commented on another video and told a story about how they arrived to Miami airport on an international flight. On their arriving flight, they'd been given a can of soda on the plane, which they didn't drink and they didn't open it and they had it in their bag. So when they had to clear security again for their connecting flight, the can of soda was of course confiscated, even though they'd gotten it on the previous flight. The reality is security doesn't know where you've been or if you've left the airport, nor where you got any liquids that you may have acquired along the way. This leads me to my next don't, which is don't buy anything at duty-free or airport shops that wouldn't clear security. This includes any liquids that don't pass the 311 liquid rule, which I discuss in more detail in my episode about TSA liquid hacks and solid toiletries. So even though that bottle of liquor or perfume or jam or whatever may be a great deal at the duty-free airport shop that you are leaving from, if you have a connecting flight, it may get confiscated if you have to pass through security again. The only way around this would be if you have checked luggage that you collect at your layover airport, then you can open your checked luggage and you can stash your duty-free goods in the checked bag before you check it again for your onward flight. Still though, that's a pretty risky strategy because it's hard to know whether or not your checked luggage is going to be checked through to the final destination or whether you're going to be collecting it at the layover airport and rechecking it. So frankly, just best not to buy anything at the airport unless it's before your final flight. My last do and don't are about charging devices. Do keep chargers and power banks in your personal item bag or your carry-on luggage. This allows you to recharge your electronics between flights if you have a long itinerary or if there wasn't a functioning power outlet on the first flight. But don't use the USB charging ports at the airport. You might think this is odd advice since they're there for charging, right? Well, yes, but if you don't have the right kind of charge cord, you could be a victim of juice jacking. This is a form of cyber theft that involves loading malware onto your device when you plug it into one of these public USB charging ports. The malware can then extract your personal data, passwords, and more. You can avoid juice jacking if you have a special USB charge cord that does not allow for the transfer of data. But frankly, better yet, just recharge your devices using your power bank or using the AC power outlets instead of the USB ports. Do you have any airport layover tips and secrets? please share in the comments. Also on the next screen, you're gonna see a couple of videos that have been handpicked for you. So please check them out because it tells YouTube that you find my content valuable, which helps me find more people like you so that together we can all travel smart in style. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA The Professional Hobo, and I'll catch you next time. Ciao.